Hello, my name is Jen Taylor, and I am excited about having the privilege of serving as the Mary Freebed Guild President for the next two years. Our Guild, 130 Women Strong, has a drive and passion for the culture provided at Mary Freebed. For 129 years, we have been a part of this amazing journey, becoming one of the largest rehabilitation hospitals in the country. We began by providing one free bed for a patient financially in need to where we are today, caring for more patients in more places than ever before, all with the same mission and heart. This could not have been accomplished without the dedication and passion of each and every one of you in our Mary Freebed family. So on behalf of the Guild, I want to take this moment to thank you for all that you do, no matter what your role is here at Mary Freebed, no matter what door you walk through to do your job. Thank you for being a part of this hospital system and helping to restore hope and freedom to our patients. You are selfless, caring, and kind, and the very best at what you do. Each of you bring a spirit of joy and hope to your job and ultimately to our patients. The Guild knows this and greatly appreciates you. We can all relate to what a year it has been. 2020 has been a year like no other, and I'm sure we all have a story or two to tell. Sadly, the story for our Guild members is that we have had to cancel or modify many of our favorite events, whether it is personally serving you lunches or treats, greeting and escorting patients, putting on our annual art show, helping at our junior wheelchair and adaptive sports camp, sharing our hospitality cart with patients, and generally just spending time at the hospital. We miss you and want you to know that we join you in spirit in providing hope and freedom. The Guild and I want to take this opportunity to wish you and yours a joyful, happy, peaceful holiday season filled with a few of your favorite things. Please enjoy this short video and we look forward to seeing you in person and in the coming new year. I just, I feel like Olivia is one of those stories that is gonna stick with me. She was, she's such a spectacular person. Um, she has an incredible heart and she was such a fighter. She's different, you know, we get a lot of, we get a lot of patients that come, come and go. And I like to look back on her and her story. A case like Olivia's, her faith, her, her, the amount of recovery that she made, you know, like I said, a miraculous story. There's no doubt about it. Large emergency response outside of Holland Hospital. One of the victims is a 22-year-old nurse employed at Holland Hospital. Me and my boyfriend were just going to hang out. It's basically, we were walking on a sidewalk, not even crossing a street, and we were hit by a car going 70. The biggest thing with Olivia, I can't remember the number of fractures that she had in her body, but it was extensive, basically from her face and her mandible all the way down to her, both tib fibs were broken. It can be tough to see. It can be hard because, you know, that's a fellow nurse. And then to see her there um, with broken bones and incisions and her jaw wired shut, it pushed me to try and be a, you know, be a better nurse for her so that she could get up on her feet again and go back to being a nurse and doing what she loves. There was so many different injuries with Olivia that, um, it was difficult to know what to focus on at any given time, and I think I appreciate the most that they they kept trying to figure out something. I mean, I had all the therapies, like I had so many different traumatic injuries and stuff, and so I just, I went through all the therapies. So I had physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, they worked with pool therapy, music therapy, lots of different things, and like, something I appreciated so much is like the creativity of all the different therapists too. All right, sorry. I think my first time that I met Peter and had him come in, he had handed me a ukulele because he'd heard that I played the ukulele. And I I don't know how I did it because again with the brain injury, I wasn't fully processing. You know, I wanted to do something that was accessible to her as a way for us to establish a little bit of rapport at the beginning because she was capable of doing so little physically. I mean, I sat there with tears in my eyes because it, she played and she reached for each note. It blows my mind that you know all these chords. <laughs> it's so cool. Does it feel good? Oh, I can tell. You see so many of <laughs> That was just really special to show her what she could still do. You know, out of all the things that she couldn't do, 
yet. Um, this was something she, she still could do. Everybody knew our live was coming back to us. I mean, we knew we had a long road ahead, but the music, it, it, it woke, woke her up. When I read Olivia's history going in, I, I mean, I'm like, okay, this is one motivated young lady that if she's 21 years old and is already in a, a, a practicing RM. And one of the things that I remember is that we were, we were allowed to get her up right away. We were allowed weight bearing was tolerated right from day one with Olivia. And she was only, I think when we saw her, she was about a week and a half post her accident. So it was kind of amazing that we were allowed to get her on her feet. To watch the team come together and figure out what's going to work what will work and I never sensed they were discouraged. They, they just kept trying new resources no matter what didn't work they kept trying. The pool therapy was definitely a huge turning point. When you're in a warm therapy aquatic environment um, you see a lot of um, bigger gains than you do on land. Um, so getting her to ambulate and walk um, for her first steps in the pool was pretty spectacular. Um, I think that was a moving moment for everyone. She didn't worry about the past, she didn't worry about the future, and she worked on today as she could with what she was given for the day. And she progressed day after day after day, and in the end, it worked. <laughs> it, it showed. We had a, quite a group around us, and to see their excitement for what they had accomplished um, we were bold that we know that her healing is from God, but we know that Mary Freebed played a huge role into it. I remember waking up and being just so excited, like thinking the day has come, like this has been such a long journey and just having that excitement just fill my heart. The anticipation of that alone, I knew it was gonna get me. Like I just felt emotional from the get-go and she came around the corner with her walker Everyone just was losing it. I mean, I for sure was crying. Going out with the walker, um, just sat, surrounded by so much, so much encouragement and support. I just remember like tears coming to my eyes and just being like, these therapists, these nurses, these doctors, these techs, they've all become like my family. Um, especially with COVID restrictions and everything. Like I didn't get to see my family, my immediate friends. All of a sudden throughout that time, the staff at Mary Freebed truly became a family to me and seeing them all individually wishing me farewell and coming out like it was such an encouragement to me and I just remember being flooded with so many emotions. I remember tears and I remember therapists and techs and nurses hugging us goodbye. It was, um, Liv even said when we, as we drove off, this is family now. Um, we have a new family. And I basically was to a point where there, there was no hope and yet I was able to cling on to hope, cling on to trust, um, and God was able to do a miracle.